Welcome back, everybody. Rick Santelli is standing by. He's got some breaking economic news. Rick, good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, you know, we expected starts to be down for a second month. January was down big, and we were correct. We expected a number around 1.56 million seasonally adjusted annualized units. We're way below that. 1.4 to 1 million seasonally adjusted annualized units, and that's uh, down uh, over 10 percent. And consider, last time we are at 1.4 to 1 well, it was quite a while ago. You'd have to go back to August. Now, permits, permits dropped as well uh, from uh, an expected number somewhere around 1.7, 1.8 million seasonally adjusted annualized units to 1.682. So that's a drop of over 10 percent as well. But, of course, permits have been skating much stronger as of late, so that only backs you up to about November last year. You know, consider this, is that permits uh, are, are well above pre-pandemic levels by over 20 percent. And we all know that multifamily was the biggest part of starts. We see all these commodity prices, lumber, crude, copper. So the big question today on a Fed day is, you know, that ATM wealth, the fact they pulled out 150, I think, billion dollars last year on, on mortgages with those price surging, will that continue? Because many are predicting, you know, we've seen the bright spot on housing. And, of course, we see interest rates continue to buck anything regarding housing because they're looking right through it. 1.67 now. Uh, these are the highest intraday yields for 10-year notes. Uh, we're well over 240 now in 30-year bonds. And the pattern's the same. Look at the 26th of January, last major Fed meeting. And what we saw there was that was a takeoff point for rates, takeoff point for the dollar index, and even equities. There's a little bit of something for everybody. Becky. Back to you. Rick, thanks. Let's uh, bring in Steve Leisman, also Diana Olick, get some reaction from them. Diana, let's start with you on the, the housing permits. Well, you know what I'm going to do is break down between single family and multifamily because that's what's most important in this market. Multifamily, we have a lot of supply. Single family, we have a record low supply of existing homes for sale and we need new construction. And the numbers here are not good at all, especially when you look at single family. The permits are down 10 percent for the month, still up year over year. But what I'm concerned about here is one big red flag in the starts. That is that you have starts down in February, not just month to month, but they are flat year over year. Now, flat year over year should not be happening right now because we need much more supply in this market. Mortgage rates are rising slightly, but they're still near historic lows. So that shouldn't be the problem. What we're hearing from the builders, what we heard in the builders' sentiment numbers yesterday, is that they've got this backlog of demand that they just cannot produce. They have much higher costs for land, labor, material. Lumber prices are up over 200 percent since last April. So a lot of the builders, they don't want to be putting up houses when prices for them are this high. Hi. Now, Lenar said yesterday that they could pass on some of this cost to the buyers. They're raising prices, but you can't do that that much till they hit the affordability wall and buyers just say, I'm done. So when they hear when I see this zero really flat change year over year in single family housing starts, that's concerning for the health of this market, which just needs more houses or else prices are just forget it. Steve, what do you have to add to that? Um. So I think what's what I don't want to say this is good, but the, the housing market had been on an absolute tear. Uh, you have the rise in mortgage rates um, at a time like this. Taking a little froth out of the market is not the worst thing in the world. Although what Diana says, I think, is very important. The idea that that um, uh, there's a tremendous need for housing. And, and I think the big problem is relative to the shifts that have happened po amid the pandemic. Uh, there's this huge demand for single family homes and not so much a demand for some of the multifamily units. And we'll see if prices adjust or, you know, the, the, the replacement prices adjust that people say, you know what, maybe it is worth it now to go into a multifamily home because prices have fallen. You have the inflation factor playing a role here in terms of higher input prices. And we'll see if that eases off in, in the coming months when you get some of the supply change back into uh, better, better uh, uh, working, a better working place because of some of the disruptions from the pandemic. Um, I, I will say that that it's okay broadly macroeconomically if housing falls off a little bit, if consumer spending and some other activity were to pick up, Becky. So um, it, we'll, we'll be watching this. It's important to have this housing uh, activity for the economy, but hopefully, it's replaced in the coming months by other activity. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC.
on YouTube.